do we even have to play game four at this point? I don't want to watch it. Can we not? Can we just skip it? NHL, can you just end the series, make it three? Habs and three was the meme. Jets and three was the meme. Can we just, can we make that a reality, please? Please? Yeah, wait, you know what? No, they, we don't even deserve to watch an intro of past highlight reels after that game. Um, yeah, no. No. Uh, so yeah, welcome. Welcome fans of the sport of hockey. Welcome NHL fans. Welcome Habs fans. Welcome Jets fans. I'm back doing another game. Didn't live stream this one as I said I wouldn't. And thank God I didn't. I'm really glad I didn't. Because I wanted to be able to talk and just experience the community for this one. I've been live streaming a lot. And when I watch, when I watch the games, I like to be on my phone during the intermissions, during the commercial breaks. I like to be checking Reddit, Twitter, Instagram. I like to be plugged into the Jets community and the Habs community and the NHL world when games are on. And I'm glad I was this game. Because holy crap. I was watching this game with my dad, and me and him both agreed. I think this was the worst Jets game we've ever watched in 10 years since they come back. I know there have been bad games in the past, but I, I genuinely believe that this is the worst game in franchise history since we've come back from Atlanta. Like, this series has been so bad, just fold the team back to Atlanta at this point. Don't actually, but like it, it, it feels that way, doesn't it? Like, am I the only one that just feels like... I'm like Bohemir from Lord of the Rings, and every, I'm just getting back up every time I get shot with an arrow right through my chest, looking like I'm dead. And I get up, oh, I'm ready for game two. Oh, dead. Oh, I'm ready for game three. Dead. I don't remember off the top of my head how many times he got shot, but I'm pretty sure it was four. So what happens in game four? I come back ready, and I'm dead because that's how I feel right now. This team has kind of broken me in a sense that I actually just don't care anymore. Like, I, I bleed for this team, I love this team, and I'll watch it, and I will still stream it. Even though I don't want to, I still will. For one reason, because I'm a Jets fan, and I don't back out when my team is crap. I will watch them when they're crap. Even if that means I get to rip them apart because they're my team still, I'll watch them. And I will still watch and stream that. But holy crap, this game was one of the worst games I've ever seen in my life. And I don't even know what to say. Like, like how uninspired can you be? You were down 2-0. And you play like that. I'm, I wish Lowry didn't score that goal. I really do. Because I wish it was like 7... I wish this game was... like I wish it was the 7-1. This game felt like that law. Like the bold you game from way back when of this earlier in the season. Like, like the Jets did nothing right tonight. Like nothing. And yeah, you can say, Hey, JPEG City, what are you talking about? They generated some good looks at time. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I always like to say that just because you're an NHL player, you should be able to generate at least a couple good opportunities a game. Even if you're a horrid game, worst performance of your career, you should. You know why? Because you're an NHL player, there's a reason why you're in the league. You should be able to generate at least a couple good plays because you should have some skill, right? Right? So, where do we even start with this game? Like, like genuinely, where do I start? Should I start with the third? Should I start with the second first? Go in reverse? Does it matter? Who cares? Like, like genuinely. Like, you know what? We're going red. We're going to turn the LEDs on. We're pumping them. If I had a Habs jersey, I'd put it on. I did put it on for a little bit of a joke. I put my dad's Habs jersey on. Just because it was, at this point, who cares? I don't know what's wrong with this team. I, I genuinely don't. I, I, I really don't. Like, I look at this team and I look, okay, Mark Shifley's gone. Huge loss, right? Doesn't matter what your thoughts are on Shifley. Right now, I'm not even the biggest fan of Shifley, minus the hit and all that stuff, because I'm just, just upset with everything. And then you look, 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 this is what I'm trying to say, okay? I gotta, let me just calm down, take a deep breath, relax, right? All right, let's try this again. The reason why they just lost this game was very, very simple. Nobody showed up. Not a single person other than Connor Hellebuck. Does that sound like a new norm or anything out of the ordinary, ladies and gentlemen, if you're a Jets fan? Does it? Does it? No, doesn't. You know why it doesn't? Because Connor Hellebuck is the only reason why this Winnipeg Jets team is relevant. What are you talking about? Blake Wheeler's a great player. Mark Scheifele's a top 10 center. Kyle Connor's one of the best underrated goal scorers. It doesn't matter. You know why it doesn't matter? Where's Blake Wheeler tonight? Hitting the post. Oh, yeah, well, good luck. Jay can't rip him for that. Don't matter. I don't care. I'm not ripping him for hitting the post. I'm ripping him for being absolutely invisible other than that. Blake Wheeler is supposed to be one of the best leaders in the NHL. I'm Like, he's been praised by the team, but Paul Maurice, like, everybody goes after how good of a captain Blake Wheeler is at times and how great he is as a leader. If he's such a good leader... Why can't he lead and motivate his team? Like, like a genuine question. This is a game, we, and, and the last two, since the Shifley hit, you need to motivate your team. It doesn't matter if, what the media said. Like, there's no faith in that man, it feels like. None. And, and even if there is, where is it on the ice? 
We get Paul Stastny back tonight. Oh, that might be a great, great boost, right? I was talking heavy about how bad PLD was. And don't you worry, we'll get to PLD. But you have Stastny coming back. That's huge for tonight, right? Stastny was awful tonight. His worst game as a Jet this season. Of course it comes tonight. Of course it comes tonight. And I'm not going to rip Stastny apart because he could be playing injured for all we know. And there's a reason why maybe he made the plays he did. Like I'm, I'm not going to rip him apart. Because he's been so good for us and such a good key leader. And I've got so much respect for the way he called out this team when we were on that losing streak. I'm not going to rip him. But Paul Stastny coming in tonight, that's just a, it just says how everything went bad for the Jets. The guy that I thought could make this team better last game. A guy who we missed in that face-off circle and just in that center rotation. And he comes back as a winger tonight. Okay, Paul. That one makes sense. Like, I'm frustrated as a Jets fan because I've been covering this team all year round. Even the games I've missed and I haven't uploaded the game reactions and breakdowns on YouTube, I've watched them. I just haven't had my computer and the time and the ability to make those content. I've watched every game this season. And I'm sorry, but like this, this team plays so... This team has no heart. So many games of the season, and now they have no heart again. And I don't understand how. Me and my dad were talking about this a lot during that game. because We're kind of just baffled. I'm 21 years old. My dad is 55. In his lifetime, that he could think of off the top of his head, we could be wrong, and that's fine, because it's just off the top of my head. I'm not looking through the NHL history books for this one. But can you honestly think of a team that was that dominant in a sweep against the Oilers? And think of the Oilers as what you want, being a weaker opponent or whatever. But just in all, in all seriousness, in all the facts, that team, as dominant as they were, going into the second round, doesn't matter with the week off. You know why? It just it doesn't. Because at least, if you had a week off, you should at least be able to perform semi-well. And there's nothing within the series at all. Like, more fans were not as heavy on the Jets as I was as Game 1, but I saw it in Game 1. That wasn't Rust. That was the Jets all season long. That was the Jets in the losing streak. That was the Jets when they lost bad games. That was just the Jets this season. And you can make the argument for last year. And in this year, it's the same thing. Your defense is just horrible. Horrible! The defense was horrible tonight. Tuck, how many turnovers? I don't even know, and I don't want to know. I don't want to see the number. That was embarrassing amount of turnovers. How many turnovers can you give in a Stanley Cup Game 3 down 2-0? Like, I'm sorry, but I, this is why I wish Connor Hellebuck wasn't even in net tonight. And I, I love Lauren Bassois, but put it on him. You know why? Because who cares at this point? Connor Hellebuck was so good tonight, making so many good saves, but no one's going to be talking about that because he let in five goals. Technically, he only let in four because one was an empty netter, which I actually called, ironically. I left the room and said they're going to score anyway, and sure enough, they did. You know why? Because the Jets suck with an empty net pulled. Always. Anytime they pull the net with like three minutes left, they always allow a goal, almost. Always. Especially this season. It's just been frustrating as all hell. But, like, the defense, like, the defense this game was horrible. There was not a single good defense, but Josh Morrissey was horrible. Neil Pionk did the best he could, but he can't be everywhere at once, and he looked very tired and drained. You had Derek Forbert, who was just getting undressed throughout the entire night. Tucker Pullman, who was a pylon moving the puck through the neutral zone. And then Jordy Ben just was Jordy Ben, just mediocre, barely there, and he did a lot of turnovers, and I don't know how many, like, at the end of the game, I saw Jordy Ben made, like, a toe drag at the blue line and walked it in and put it, like, four feet wide of the net, and I was like, oh, that's typical. That's what I would expect to see from him, but you know what? At least, in my opinion, Jordy Ben wasn't probably the worst defender tonight. I think Derek Forbert was, and I would make an argument that this was one of Morrissey's probably worst game of the series, probably. He was horrible tonight. Horrible. How many times is Morrissey going to get the puck at the blue line and like just walk it into a crowd of like two Habs converging on him and he shoots it down the blue line or shoots it around the boards behind the net and the Habs collect it and they go back on the attack. Like Morrissey just gets pressured so much. He gives the puck up so much in the offensive zone. It's embarrassing to watch. Like you can obviously tell he's out of his element at this point, but I don't know why he's being thrown out into the fire consistently. It doesn't make any sense to me. I've said this all year round. Like Morrissey's not a bad defenseman, but you're asking the guy to carry a core and he can't. Cause like how can you? This this is like ECHL level defense you get tonight, and Morrissey's just gonna make us immensely better because you're paying him six million. He's got an A on his letter. Like come on, we we need defense. And and this is what I'm bringing me into. Like I'm probably gonna be going for a lot longer still because there was just so much crap. The depth. What depth? Like, we have depth only when the team's healthy. You guys ever notice that? When the Jets get injuries and the depth has to come up and try to, like, you know, replace and be be competent, they're just invisible and so mediocre. Like, we never have lines that just juggle well with injuries, I feel like. Especially this season and in the playoffs, especially. This series has just been crap since Shifley's went out the last two games. No chemistry, no nothing. And yeah, you can make the argument that maybe the Winnipeg media, maybe the fan base. I didn't. I like the. Sh I didn't like the Shifley hit. I went on Shifley, but I, I. I still think that it wasn't the team's fault. It was just Mark Shifley. Like, why are you playing so, so bad? And what you think like you've been made the bad guy? Then play physical hockey. That's that's the next thing we're gonna be touching on. Where the. 
holy crap. Like, you can't even... What hits? What hits? Like, the Jets were so good at hitting the last game. And this game, like, I, I felt like any hit they gave was just, like, a bump. Like, how many times... Like, I saw this so many times. Derek Forbert would be coming in, playing defense, and he's become... What? Like, I'll, I'll walk you through it. He's skating backwards, and the Montreal forward is coming down the boards. Derek Forbert's in a perfect position to come in... And rub him on on the boards. Perfect position. He's playing it perfectly. Like, it's, it's textbook. You can obviously tell us what he's going to be doing. He's lining it up perfectly. He's going to pinch him out. It's great. And then what happens? He doesn't even do that. He goes in for a light body check. And then he spins around. And he throws a stick like this. And he tries to... It's just ridiculous. Like, you're supposed to be a defensive defenseman. And you won't pinch a guy out on the boards on a rush? What? No one did that tonight almost, I felt like. And Logan Stanley was... Like, how Logan Stanley should be hitting so much more. He should be doing so much. You know what? I'm going to pull up. I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to pull up the Jets' score from this game, the box score. And I'm going to look at the stats. You know why I'm going to look at the stats? Because I don't want to see them, but just because I need to see how bad they are, just to vindicate my opinions on this game. Because, like, like genuinely, like, there was not a single positive, and this team is just broken in every which way. Every which way. Every way. There's nothing positive about this team right now. And you know what the biggest problem is for me? You have great players still, the Jets. Like, you have great players, apparently. Like, I'm sorry, but be honest, ask yourself this question. And I, I honestly ask yourself this. At this point, forget about Edmonton. I'm being all serious because forget about Edmonton. Because what I'm going to say is going to sound weird if you think about Edmonton. Because Kyle Connor, in my personal opinion, he sucks. And he is not at all a complete player for our team anymore. I'm sorry, but like... Like, yeah, I know he was clutch. Like, how can you be so clutch to score a serious clinching game in triple overtime? That goal was huge for this. One of the biggest goals ever. And yet you come in this, and it's the same thing. Every time he's in the zone, toe drag, quick couple hands, try to feel it between the leg, make a move, and then shoot it wide, shoot it on carry, or throw it across the ice to the winger or center coming in to support you. Or drop it back to your defender who's cutting into the center of the ice, like I said, where he's going to get converged on by the Montreal center and, two to, and another defender, and then he gets bodied out of the puck, loses it, or he rings it around the board. Like, how many times? Like, like I just don't understand. Like, if you're the coach of Montreal, you're like, boys, just... Open your eyes, watch it. They're 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 they're, they're a beast of a uh, of I don't even know what to say. Like I don't like Montreal doesn't have to be coached. They can just watch after five minutes. Okay, they're doing the exact same thing every time. Let's just stop them. They're not going to change, and they don't. Like like they... what is it going to take to get this team motivated? Nothing now because it's over. Obviously, like I'm streaming game four to watch to finish out this game, like in the series and the season. They're not winning it. There's no way they will. And if you're like, oh, pessimistic, I'm sorry, but what is what has been shown to you in the last three games that they're going to come out and win game three? And don't tell me, oh, the Habs did it too. And that was such a different series. This is a broken team with no heart, no no identity, nothing. The Jets' identity is, oh, we have a Vesna winning goaltender in Connor Hellebuck that carries us a lot of the time and carries a horrible defense, an ECHL-level defense at times. It's just pathetic. Shevel Dayoff has the most crucial offseason ahead of him this year because he needs to look at the Jets, look at what they have, and look at the cap and be like, okay, can't we win with Shifley and Connor and Blake Wheeler right now? Because personally, I don't think so. And I know Kyle Mark Shifley has been an absolute amazing player in the playoffs at times, and even this year he was pretty good in that first round. But it's not Mark Shifley as the guy, more importantly, that I'm talking about. Maybe you have to eventually. I don't know. Maybe he asked for a trade. Who knows? It's all crap right now I'm spewing. But look, genuinely ask yourselves and look at what Mark, Blake Wheeler and Kyle Connor bring when Mark Shifley's not in the lineup. Is Blake Wheeler worth 8.5 or whatever the hell he's being paid over payment? Is Kyle Connor a, a top 15 talent maybe because he scores goals? I don't see anything from these guys that, that screen. Like Kyle Connor was invisible for a lot of the game to me. Yeah, he has a couple good looks, but when he's that skilled, you expect him to put up a couple looks. But without a center in front of him, he's so bad. And we've said this for a long time. Kyle Connor, from way from Mark Shifley, has never really been an amazing player. There's a reason why Kyle Connor never got really swapped off with Patrick Liney when he was here, because that was the line that worked. That's where Kyle Connor fit. No one was moving Blake Wheeler. There's why Patrick Liney got upset. And we're already at 14 minutes, and we still haven't even touched upon Pierre-Luc Dubois. Why? Because I already made a video explaining everything wrong with PLD, and that happened. Like, it's just, everything I said in that video, PLD tonight. PLD the game before. PLD all season. And you're going to give me the excuse that he's injury-riddled still? No. No way. The guy's been playing worse. So, if he's been healthy, got injured, got healthy, he should be getting healthier, right? Unless he's hi hiding injuries or he's still, whatever. 
Like, horrible. Absolutely horrible. I'm sorry, but in this game, with the way things were going, I'll take Patrick Lahane on that power play. As Like, I'm sorry, but what, they don't play defense as it is. The top line does not play defense. The top six barely plays any defense. The defense doesn't play defense. So who cares if you have a generational goal talent in Patrick Lyon who sucks at defense but can at least be a howitzer shot for you on the power play because your power play is staler than, than air that's been... I don't even... Oh, God. What what do you do? What do you genuinely do to fix this? Is Paul Paul Maurice, you throw him out? No, you know why? Because Paul Maurice, there was nothing he could do. And there was, he could have been the greatest coach of all time tonight and the Jets would have lost because the players had no heart. It doesn't matter if your system or your plays are set well. And, like, I don't like Paul Maurice and I have some upsets with him this series so far, but when you have your, your veteran line that is probably playing better hockey defensively than anything else, that says a huge, a lot, a lot about the core you have and their, their morality and the way they play the game. Blake Wheeler needs to show up and be a leader that he apparently is because I don't see it anymore. I don't. I don't see why we defend him. I don't see why he's a top-line player. I'm sorry, I don't. There are so many better line combos you could be throwing out with what you have right now, yet you throw out the same stale crap from three games in a row now. It's it's embarrassing. It's sad, and it's a joke to the city of Winnipeg. I, it really is. It, it, and if you don't think so... I, I implore you to open your eyes, look at everything this season, look at last year's loss to Calgary and the season before that, look at sets the year we lost to St. Louis and that season, look at everything that has plagued the Jets, every problem and every season what has progressed. Yeah, Chevy has made an effort to make the defense better, apparently. If he doesn't do it this year, if Paul doesn't play the fucking young talent next year, if we don't see Billy, if we don't see Cole, if we don't see Veselin and Harkins, Gustafson, any of these young guys that are way... Well, they deserve a better look than any of the guys. In, the, the, in my opinion, Cole Perfetti deserves to be on that top line more than Blake Wheeler does. Shout out to Cole Perfetti for at least winning gold on Team Canada. On a Team Canada with basically no stars where Andrew Mangiapane was probably one of their best players. Like... I'm sorry, but if, if he's good enough to be on a Team Canada roster with almost nobody, how is he not good enough to be on your club? This team is a joke. It has been for a while now. There's so many pl problems plaguing this team, and, and it was just obvious. There's something going on with this in this club, and it has nothing to do with the Shifley hit, even though that is a huge morality thing that hangs over you. Like, th this is just the Jets from so much of the regular season, during the losing streak, during bad games, no heart. It's just a consistency. When the Jets lose badly or have bad games, every fan unanimously agrees. No heart. There's no heart on this club. None. Like, Mark Shifley, you should be defending Mark Shifley. Playing for him. If you believe in your guys so much and you think it was, and Paul thinks it wasn't a bad hit if Blake standing up for all these guys the hate Mark Shifley's family is getting, play for him. Like, who cares if the media is making you the bad guy? Like, you're the Winnipeg Jets. You get no media attention as it is, and then when you finally get some, you're the bad guy. Play above it. Ex bring yourself above the hate and be an NHL team. Lead, Blake. That's what I all come back to. The leadership, the way this team is run, the room, everything. There's something wrong with it. Because how can you have this much talent and not show up in games like this in the playoffs in round two when you're down 2-0? You're now down 3-0. Facing a sweep tomorrow in a back-to-back. -back. You just lost like that. And now you're supposed to have, we're supposed to have faith. The Jets faithful is supposed to have faith in this club. I'm sorry, but I can't. I don't support this club. I don't, I, I, I don't support the decisions being made. I support my team. I don't support the directions of this team right now. There's something wrong with this core in the locker room, the heart of this team. There's something wrong with it. Genuinely, there is. There has to be. Because why else can't you have guys that are being paid good steel contracts that everyone around the league... like? There's a, why are the Jets the deepest team in the NHL when, and with the offense when, until they're not? Like, like, I'm sorry. This isn't a slump. This is just the Jets being the Jets. I saw this throughout the regular season. My, my, and it's just pathetic. This team needs to have some type of identity change. There needs to be something that happens to shake up that room. Clearly moving Line A for a PLD wasn't the spark that you needed. Line A wasn't the cancer that we all were told he was, huh? Apparently, so Line A's Fortnite. You would, like, I'm sorry, but no. No, even Line A in a bad year was 30 goals. What does Pierre-Luc Dubois bring? And we trashed Line A and ran him out of town because Blake Wheeler and the fan base and the coaching and everything and the way we just attacked this kid. He would want to leave. Because there's no defense. You don't put your the anger on Blake Wheeler tonight? Kyle Connor, where is it? If you're a Jets fan of this team and you're not angry, at, and you put, you're putting your anger in the wrong places. Let me just tell you that. Shout out to the Habs because you guys played a great game. Absolutely fantastic game. You guys have been great this series. Uh, good luck going up against the Avalanche most likely. Uh, in the third round. Who knows? If you guys can pull, Maybe you guys can pull off an upset. Maybe this is the Habs year. You know, the ha I don't remember exactly the stat, but whatever it is, it's comparing back to the 93 team. So, 
Who knows what happens? Honestly, at this point, I actually like this Habs team because they're coming out of nowhere. They're playing great hockey, and I love Carey Price. I'm not switching to Hab City hockey, and there's no way that's happening. But you know what? Maybe I'll watch this team a little bit more because at least it seems like the young guys get a look when they're playing bad. They experiment with their roster, and they have heart and play for they they play for themselves. They play for the the, the crest on their on their jerseys, the name on the back, and the guy sitting next to them on the bench. What do the Jets play for? Blake Wheeler's just playing for his eight and a half million dollars. Put out some more be funky hats, and then go off in the offseason and golf. Like, what's Kyle Connor gonna do? Big Buff saw this and got right out. He's fishing and enjoying life because he didn't want to be a part of this shit show anymore. I'm done. 20 minutes is enough. I'll see you all tomorrow at game time for the live stream. If you're a new person and you just found this video, Habs fan or not, I implore you, turn on notifications, subscribe, and come join with me tomorrow and watch this team. Watch history be made as the Jets become one of the worst playoff performances of the last decade after sweeping a team to get swept by a team that everyone, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to say it. The Habs, oh, Habs don't deserve to win. Habs deserve to take this and run. You deserve to win after game one. I'm done. I'll be watching this game. Join me for tomorrow. Um, hell, I don't even know if we can have peace, love, and positivity after this in my mind right now. But I'll say it anyway for you guys out there. Hope you're having a great day. Enjoying life if you can be. If you're a Jets fan, hold on to the sanity you have left. And just, just breathe and remember, we have Cole Perfetti. That's at least something. And we have Billy Hinola and Connor Hellebuck. There's got to be some changes, but we're still in a position that we can be good. We just have to make the right decisions and the right moves with this team and fix the identity problems that we have because we, we're not going to win playing the way we do. And we're not going to win with this play style. We, there's something's got to change in that room. This team has no heart, and it's, it's sad to watch because you're in the second round and you play like this. You deserve to lose, Winnipeg. You deserve to lose. Be better. Be, the, be better not for yourselves, but for the fans that bleed for this team. Please. Like... Please. That's all we want. We went 20 years or whatever it was without this team, without even having the NHL back. We finally get them back. We've had some good runs. One good run. We've had some exciting playoffs. We've had some memorable moments in this last 10 years. But for the love of God, please, for your fans, just show up once in this series. Thank you for watching this video. I'm Peg City Hockey. Have a good rest of your day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Right at Puck Drop. Please be there. Watch and watch, watch this game with me. And I will see you guys tomorrow in the live stream. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.